Okay. Let's go to the next item. And we are on to roll call. All right, Chair. Okay, sounds good. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, roll call Alder Dorf. Here. Alder Weary. Here. Clerk Teske. Here. Chief of Staff Jeffries. Here. Cherry Racine. Here. Karen Schley. Here. Susan Schmidt. Uh, no H yet. And Allison Stottinger. Here. Great. All right, so first thing on the agenda, and um, as I said, welcome back. We haven't seen each other for a couple of weeks, but um, first thing on the agenda is approval of the agenda for July 9th, 2020. Approve. Second. Uh, I missed who was Weary. You no, know, I saw Alder Weary. Karen, was that you? That was no, me. Sorry. That was me. Sorry. Okay. Uh, motion to approve by Alderman Alderman Wary and second by Terry Racine. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And, and anyone opposed? No one opposed. Okay, so the uh, agenda is approved for today. Next on the agenda, approval of the minutes, June 18, for the June 18, 2020 minutes. Move to approve. Thank you. I'll second. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Alderman Weary, motion to approve. Uh, second by Terry Racine of the June 18, 2020 minutes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And all those opposed? Okay, Every, everyone's in favor. Um, for next on the agenda, updated calendar for August 11, 2020 election. So what you'll find in that calendar is essentially what um, uh, Deputy Clerk Waite had provided. She has two calendars, so I only did August um, and I'll update for November for our next meeting. So that's essentially what is coming up, what are what the deadlines are. And that's a lot for the clerk's office, but I think it's important for the committee to know too. Absolutely. Um, question on that. I looked through our packet. Is it in the packet, the calendar? It should be. Okay. Um, uh, maybe I missed it. There. It wasn't there. Oh my, okay. It's not there. I apologize okay. for that. Um, okay, so I didn't miss it. I just uh, no. I I do have. Let me just put this. I can find this and put this up on the screen so everyone can see it. Moment. So here is the calendar. Um, yeah, sorry that didn't, thought I had added that, but this is the calendar for up to August. And like I said, I'll add the November election, which Kim had provided to me uh, for our next meeting on August 23rd. So as oh. you can see, we've got. Um, last day for electors. I'm sorry, someone was saying something. Karen? No? I just Okay, sorry. Um, public test of uh, the uh, tabulating equipment, last day for electors to request absentee ballot by mail, August 7th, last day for indefinitely confined. Oh, my spelling is atrocious. Um, electors to request absentee ballot by mail, um, we also have last day of, that's early in-person absentee voting on August 8th, no voter registrations taken, election day. And then uh, on August 11th from 10 to four, that's the last day for hospitalized electors 
and sequestered jurors to apply absentee by five, which I didn't even know existed. One question um, I have. So August 6th is the last day for voters to request an absentee ballot, but June 25th is, and I missed that, was that the first absentee ballots could go out? Is that what that was, June 25th? Yes. yes, absentee yeah. ballots went out June 25th, that's correct. So, so he requested a ballot earlier or who are on a list, the indefinitely confined list, or right. people who requested it in May. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's so the first day, right? Wave, waves of absentee ballots that go out? Yes, I'll let Kim and Chris describe that better because they can. Sure. Do you want to or do you want me to? <laughs> you go ahead. Okay. Yeah, June 25th is the date that we have to abide by by the state for anyone who had a request on file previous to that date. Those ballots have to be out, but then they keep coming in daily after the fact, and they can come through all the way up until the Thursday prior to the election um, for regular requests. The Friday before the election is, contains people who chose calendar year indefinitely confined or military and overseas electors and then it stops then again until after the august for november got it okay that is helpful what was the date that the early voting started at city hall it's going to be july 28th okay and kim why don't you update on telling them how many you're getting a day um, there's a portion <laughs> of what's coming in. These are ones where no one's putting their witness ain't putting their address, so we got to look them up. And, if, and then there's always the ones where they're missing their signatures, and we got to mail them back. So it's been a steady flow. Um, I don't even know a count off the top of my head, but it's like the big mail container bins that keep coming in. So, and she gets between 100 and 200 requests a day. Okay. I do have to, if I could, I just wanted to compliment you. My daughter just turned 18 and she requested it, I think Sunday night or Monday night, and she came in the mail today. So it's a pretty quick turnaround. Yeah. I've, <laughs> I've been able to honor the 24 hours. That's, That's why. Great which is what we've always done except yeah. in April. Yeah. Great. Any other questions about the calendar for August? See none. Um, perhaps we want to receive and place on file or move to do that. Sure. Make the motion that we place on file. Okay. That's Terry? Yeah. Thanks. And a second? I second it. Thanks, Karen. Okay. Terry Racine, motion by Terry Racine, second by Karen Schley to receive and file the calendar for August 11, 2020. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And all those opposed? Passes. Okay. And we're now on to poll worker recruitment. Update on efforts to recruit poll workers, including account of those who have applied. Okay, Chris, why don't you go ahead and talk and I'll pull something up on the screen. So we have, and it's changing daily because some of the regulars are um, declining now. They're saying they won't because things are getting worse. We have 157 signed up and we have 68 with pending applications. How many pending? 68. And they're coming in daily, so that's really great. Are the 68 part of the 157? No. Okay, that would be in addition to. Correct. Okay. Okay. So I guess it's time for us to update the uh, our goal sheet. I think, um, I think she already did. Oh, she, okay. So this is an old one. Okay. Yeah, 
I think she added up to 150. 150, okay. Yeah. So as you can see, this is our, you know, help us reach our goal. We have this out on the website, cute little graphic with our colors, so. And one question, is the 380 full-time all-day workers? Because I thought at one point our number that we needed was 220. What this is, is when I planned the budget for the November election, it was 380. Okay. I can get by with about 220 at the polls if I have to. Is that for November or August? Well, I like them to work the August so that they're prepared for November. Yeah. And 220 is kind of cutting it um, short because we, we need to um, you know, disinfect and things like that. And I, I would like the poll workers to get a break. Um, but I don't, when um, Shelby made this, I said, I don't want people to think we failed though by having that 380 number. Because if we get to 250, I'll be very happy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I do have a do have a question. Yes, Alderman Murray. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Chris, is there anything I can't remember on the website about uh, state law allowing you to be off of work? I know I've had a couple of people reach out to me. They're getting some pushback from their employer. <laughs> including myself, but once I show them, you know, that it's a state law that you can be allowed off, then it seems to loosen up. But uh, have you gotten any inquiries about that or is there a link to that? I usually do, you know, okay. and then I send them the information. Um, and then, I mean, like you said, you get pushback <laughs> and then you show them that and they're like, mm, I guess I don't have a choice. And then they let them. So, you know, people are just reluctant to push the fact because they don't want to lose their full-time job. And there is that. I've had some people who would love to work, but they don't want to push back where they're where they're working. So right. I'm not like that, so I got off. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I'm working. <laughs> okay. Any further questions? Yes. So, I, okay, go ahead, Terry. Nope, I was just clearing my throat, sorry. Okay, so we have a couple of other things in the hopper. Um, we do have a spot on Q90. Um, we also updated our um, application online, so it's solely online. You can electronic sign it to make it a little easier. And then also we can recruit um, high school students. So I've talked to the school district about that, talked to one principal already. Um, actually, I talked to two principals, and so I think obviously we're going to be uh, aiming for the November election just because the students are hard to find, you know, in the summertime. Um, so that's one thing we're going to get going, and then um, uh, in the coming weeks, I will also, you know, Allison, maybe we could also talk a little bit about doing a little bit of recruitment at UWGB for some students um, just to get a number of you know, to look for people to actually shoulder tap. Um, so that's the other things that we're doing, in addition to everything the clerk's office is doing. Mm -hmm. Yes, Allison. I think that's really great. Thank you for that. Um, and, and I've been sharing the online form, so hopefully some folks will apply. I was wondering if maybe, since I think November will be the, the biggest crunch for poll workers, if there would be a way for us to I, I've talked to a few students who have said, eh, I'm kind of interested, but I'm a little intimidated. I'm, I don't know what this looks like. Like if we could, if we could, you know, video, you know, what does a poll worker's actually actual day look like? Or somehow, somehow utilize the August election to show to people, and this could be low on the pretty list, that it's been fun and educational, you know? I think that's a really good idea. Um... You know, we do have the ability to, I mean, obviously the best way to take video is actually with your phone. We have some microphones. Um, I'm not sure about, yeah, about videotaping people voting. I don't know about that. Yeah, no. Go ahead, Chris. 
Yeah, um, I did. I did send Shelby um, a webinar or video that's out on the WEC on what to expect as a poll worker. Um, I can ask her to put that out on our website. Also, she sent it to I think a neighborhood association. Okay. And that's from the WEC. Yep. Okay. So I think. Um, Allison, look for that on our website, and if that is satisfactory, then no need for Yeah, then we won't have to waste resources remaking right, exactly. it. That's perfect. Thank you. Yeah, that makes sense, actually, because I think it's tough to... I mean, I love the idea. I mean, you get, you know, that local flavor if you had, if we could video it ourselves, but then, you know, as I'm thinking of it, like, well, wait a minute, what about people actually voting? I don't know. So, yeah, take a look, and if that's not satisfactory, send me an email we'll think of something else. But that's probably more than adequate, I would imagine. Okay. Okay, any other questions about poll workers? All right, um, motion, uh, do we need a motion to receive and place sure. on file? Anybody? I move to receive and place on file. A second? A second. Thank and you, Terry. Second by Terry Racine to receive and place on file the information and update on efforts to recruit poll workers, including account. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And all those opposed? Nobody opposed. Um, we'll move on to G. Um, next on the agenda, update on approval uh, on approved polling locations for the August 11, 2020 election. Yes. Chris, why don't you describe you know what happened and and I'll pull up the uh, final um, spreadsheet okay so um, we went and with um, the prior Sears building um, the wildlife sanctuary and Dan school and Keller uh, school um, Keller used to be a polling location so that's great um, and then the remaining ones that are the regular ones that offered their building to us. So we have 17. And we'll have 11 wards at Sears. Which will be really, really great. Pull this up. Uh, well, give me one second, sorry. All right, so um, this is the updated um, spreadsheet. Uh, we only, we have, I did keep the one that was only November, then some of the ones we have that are only August. Um, Dan's and Keller are only August for us. Sears, I put as only August, I think it's probably November as well. I should probably, but I'm not 100% sure, so I didn't put that in there. So that's really good. I mean, I think we've got a lot of really good coverage um, for the August election. And Sears, I was working on the layout for Sears and I think, I mean, that is just such a cool building that will have wards in their own little pods. Nice. Um, I'll have a main registration table for everyone because I think that worked um, in April with enough people um, and then a spot for the express votes um, but otherwise they'll be contained. The poll books, the voting booths and make a U where the end will be the DS200, the tabulator. Mm -hmm. So I think it'll be great. That is that is great and that I know the WEC audit for the building formerly known as Sears is done. Do we need to do audits for Keller and Dan's and Baby? Um, the Wildlife Sanctuary wow. is is done already. Um, okay. We do have the one issue where um, I talked to Dan Ditchite. He thinks that they can correct the slope before the election. If not, 
what I asked is if we could use one of their phones to make a sign so people could call to say they need assistance into the building. Okay. Instead of putting a full worker out there standing out there all day because we don't know what the weather is going to be like. Um, and he, he thought that was fine. So that's all set. Um, I put that on the audit that it's, you're planning on fixing it. Otherwise, this is what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, Keller already had one because we were there before. Um, dance school will have to have one. Okay. One done. Although I think that's a brand new building, right, Celestine? Dance, they had, no, they had, um, no, it's not a brand new. Baird is brand new. Dance oh, Baird had is. a renovation. Okay. Because okay. I wasn't sure if I could contact someone there and ask them about um, if it's ADA accessible. I just want to hear what they have to say mm -hmm. sure as to what what it's like because otherwise you know um, natal need to get there and do one then um but i didn't know if they had plans where we're going to be if, if those you know were new plans that i could go off of those right and when do we need to let the wec or when do we have to get those audits into the wec there's no date on that um, just before the election so we're fine okay. i'm yeah. on vacation this week but i planned on sending the two next week um, and then working on the one for dance. Okay, sounds good. And I'm assuming, I mean, dance is a public school. The assumption is that it meets all the ADA requirements, so. Right. That's okay. Would I have a question? Yeah. Yes. If these schools, dance and Helen Keller, if we use those in November, will that be a problem because they didn't want us in the schools? Yeah, we won't be able to use them in November. Okay, so we gotta do something different in November. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. So I'm planning. Yes, yes, Chris. I'm, I'm planning on Bay Beach to take over dance. Pavilion. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then um, it looks like we might be able to use the old Circuit City and that would work good for Keller Elementary. Yeah. For the November elections. Correct. Correct. And then Sears will know, I believe, is it two months or three months in advance? I think um, it's 70 days or 75 days. Okay. Either 70 or 90. Right, okay. So, so I, thought, I thought the contract though. It, it said uh, elections, but, uh, and Barb knows a little bit more about that detail, but um, it does, so that's how we write all those contracts. Because I had questioned that myself, Chris, when I saw that. Um, we should know by mid-August if we're good for Sears for November. Oh, okay. I thought it was a for sure. Okay. Yeah, that's just how we write. I, 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 yeah, I saw that too. That's just how we write the contract. Okay. Right. And, that uh, should give us plenty of time mid-August. Yeah. <laughs> great developer guides. <laughs> Right, and to, to, to the committee, as a reminder, um, they have, Sears will know um, whether or not it's going to be demolished at that time Absolutely. in advance of the election, so. They can wait until after November to do that. <laughs> right, fingers <laughs> crossed, as uh, Chief of Staff Jeffries had, yes. Yeah. Um, any yeah. other questions? And my understanding is that the polling locations were, the new ones were approved by resolution? Correct. All right, any other questions on that for the August election? Yes, Allison? So does this process mean it gets updated in my vote, Wisconsin, kind of automatically, and that will happen soon? I'm just thinking of how, so for example, I would vote at Sears now, except that I got my absentee ballot, thank you very much. Um, that, will, that should change pretty quickly. Uh, or is there something that we need to, to do? Um, I, yes. I was working with the WEC on Monday, um, wait, last week, and she contacted me and we got it all straightened out. It should be done already. I don't think so. Mine still says huh? First Presbyterian. I was just curious. Today it did? Today, yeah. Um, but it sounds like you've already done it. It's just in the works. I just wanted to make sure. Yep, so. I'll email Jody then to see what happened. Okay. 
Okay. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Motion to receive and place on file. Anyone? I make a motion that we receive and place on file. Thanks. And second by Karen. So Terry was seen moved and Karen to second that we receive and place on file the update on approved polling locations for the August 11, 2020 election. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Great, everybody's in favor. And I will note for the record that H. Smet has joined us and I might have missed you H if you were here for the earlier vote, but welcome. Okay, next item on the agenda, regular business, um, absentee and EIPAV and outreach. Discussion with possible action on subcommittee outreach plan and the Wisconsin Safe Voting Plan grant funded. Um, Chief of Staff Jeffries, did you want to start with that? Or? Sure. So I um, hope that uh, H and Allison had a chance to kind of look at their outreach plan. I mean, we don't have to do that today, but um, take a look at the outreach plan and then sort of index that against the safe voting plan um, just to see where it matches up or not. Um, and then, but let's just talk, let's just go through the whole safe voting plan. I think that makes sense. Um, and then as I'm pulling this up, I can describe how this whole thing came about. So um, the city of Racine, hi there H. Um, the city of Racine uh, put forward a planning grant for um, us, and us meaning the five largest cities in the state of Wisconsin to um, basically put down on a piece of paper, you know, what it is that we find that we would need um, for safe voting for the 2020 elections. So uh, Chris and myself, um, we put together uh, what we thought was a great document and um, we were able to share that with the city of Racine we did get a $10,000 planning grant, um, which hopefully the check is in our hands. Uh, some of that money we're gonna use for on um, that ballot folder. Yes, really good. But um, really the purpose of the grant uh, for the five largest cities in Wisconsin is for us to have money from the Center for Tech and Civic Life uh, to Safe election. Also, the purpose of the of the grant is to um, do some voter outreach and to reach some people that we may not have reached before. And as you can see right here, um, it says very clearly what the what the purpose is. I just have to move my thing here. So it says safely administer elections, identify best practices, practices, innovate um, to educate residents. Um, being intentional and strategic in reaching historically disenfranchised residents and communities and ensure the right to vote in dense and diverse communities. So that's the that's the thrust of our million dollar grant. Um, so that's, and we're just gonna go through this whole thing. Does anyone object to kind of going through this kind of line by line? Is that okay with everyone? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, great. Um, and that's that would be good for uh, people who would want to see this later on too. Um, so this is where we are. This is what we'd spent um, for 2020. This is our budget, so $329,000. Uh, this estimated eligible voters is from census data. Um, this is our own data, registered voters, and that's our budget. So uh, in reviewing the April election, we, as you know, had some, um, and we were not the only ones to have these issues, a drop off of poll workers, especially those who are experienced, um, a real scramble to get PPE, um, a lot of absentee ballot requests, um, a high number of voters who struggled with uh, a photo ID upload, um, and voters who were confused about the timeline, uh, especially because we had some court decisions, including the United States Supreme Court decision, that really monkeyed with the timeline and obviously confused voters. 
So this is a, a summary um, and every municipality uh, submitted um, numbers for, you know, the number of uh, voters who requested an absentee ballot, you know, the number of ballots passed, um, some ones who were rejected, how many drop boxes we had, how many early voting days we had, um, curbside voting, which everyone has to do. That's Chris, let's make sure everybody understands <laughs> curbside voting. It's the law. <laughs> It's not drive through, but it's curbside and it's the law. And curbside is different than drive through, as we've discussed at various meetings. Yes. Correct. Yep. Correct. Yes. So, the number of voters who voted early in person absentee, um, the number of additional staff who um, um, were enlisted for election, the amount spent on PPE, the number of polling locations we had. And this is, once again, we did not have drive through voting. There were some municipalities that actually did do drive through We did not. So um, that, that first curbside is for early in-person absentee, and the second curbside is for election day. So we did do that. So that making sure everybody sees the or. Because <laughs> they lumped it, to, they kind of yeah. lumped it together, and they I explained did. it in. Yeah, you did. We did explain program. it in our portion of the grant. We explained it really well. Okay, so comprehensive election needs. So this is recommendation number one, um, to encourage increased absentee voting by mail, and that means by mail and early in person, um, provide assistance to people, use secure drop boxes, which this committee has successfully um, asked for two additional drop boxes, and then I had put in our, um, and it was approved at council, in our report that we actually want four drop boxes. And you'll see in this grant that we do have money set aside for drop boxes. So you don't need the $10,000 for the drop boxes. We have money in this grant for additional drop boxes. Um, so I think we can really cover and sort of answer some of the questions that some of the alders at finance had asked about, well, we wanna make sure we have drop boxes in places where people are. I think we can also have drop boxes in places that, you know, like on campus. Um, two cam the two campuses, post-secondary. Um, deploy additional staff um, and expand early in person, which includes curbside. So there are some recommendations, it's okay. And all right, so here are, this is just a summary of all of the financial requests. So as you can see, we requested about $270,000 for encouraging um, EIPAV and absentee by mail, expanding um, uh, voter outreach to 15. And you can obviously compare to the other cities, Kenosha and Racine are smaller than Green Bay, obviously, but I can't remember, I can't remember the, does anybody know the population? I can't remember the population of Kenosha and Racine. But anyway, so you can see, um, launch poll worker recruitment, 175. Ensure safe and efficient election day administration, 426. Our total, 1,093,000. Um, and as you can see, the, the numbers are really very interesting. You know, excuse me, some, some municipalities like, well, Racine and Kenosha, they are putting a little bit more effort in the poll worker recruitment a little bit more in the voter outreach, a little bit more in the encouraging absentee by mail or absentee in person. Any questions so far? You'll have to you'll have to just speak up because I can't see all of you. You're kind of sure. in my screen. She yeah, Susan. Um, the could you remind the committee because I know it's been in the news the last couple of days the amount that Green Bay received is it the one point oh nine three? This is it right here. Okay. Plus ten thousand for the planning grant. So yes, that's what we received. Great. Or we will receive. We have we don't have the check yet. <laughs> we will get the check is in the mail. First the agreement then the check. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, absentee voting in Wisconsin, as you know, we have, um, we have no reason, I can't remember what's that called, no, 
Well, you don't have to have a reason to vote absentee. You can just request. Mm -hmm. um, and so here is what we have. That's a lot of preamble, trying to get down to where our plan is. Here we go. We'll provide assistance, and please do read all of the, you know, all of this information. It's very good information. Um, just sort of laying out the case for why early in-person absentee um, and why absentee by mail. So it's very good. But just for our purposes, let's skip down to what Green Bay asked for. So we asked for, um, to help people with the absentee ballot requests and the certification requirements, we would like to employ some voter navigators to help people. And then we would also like to spend a little bit of money um, advertising so that people can understand how they upload their ID. Uh, in reading the document, um, there are some other municipalities, Milwaukee in particular, there were a lot of people who just really didn't understand how to do that. So uh, I think we need to have people, physical people physically able to help um, those folks in our community, those voters upload their ID so that they can safely vote absentee. And there are a lot of really good ideas in here, you know, from the other municipalities. I absolutely welcome you to take a look at that. Okay, then the secure drop boxes. So we wanted to make sure that we had cameras by the drop boxes. Um, so we have a very, very, very high, <laughs> higher I think than the other ones. Uh, well, not as high, a little bit higher than Kenosha. But uh, we wanted to make sure we had cameras. And I'm not sure how the cameras will work, especially since they're not ours, but we did ask for money in the grant for something like that. I do want to say I think the drop boxes did go up in price, just so we know. Oh, yeah, of course they did. <laughs> they saw that we got a grant. They're like, oh, let's get some more money. Okay. Um, quick question on the drop boxes. I knew that there was uh, some, I guess, um, discussion on should we get two, should we get four. With this grant money, is is it, um, are we able, when I say we, is the, is the clerk's office able to just purchase the drop boxes um, without having to sort of go through finance and the city council? Is that? Right, so you're asking a question generally about how does our own, how do our own rules either uh, go under or over the grant purchase? Do we have to, and you know, that's a really good question. I'm not sure, we have a limit of, um, I think it's $25,000 and it depends on um, in terms of having to go out for bid and also it depends on whether or not there's it's a sole source so some things like the DS what's this high-speed tablet DS 450 450 the DS 450 is a sole source right so we're not going out for bid even though that piece of equipment is $65,000 $62,000 so I'm not really sure that's a really good question um, that is a question that I have to get answered from our procurement manager, Calvin. Um, when it comes to some of the other equipment, like the PPE, um, which this does help pay for, and also, like, if we were to do drive-through, tents, heaters, fans, mm -hmm. and quite frankly, even if we don't do drive-through, um, which I know this committee um, has, the committee had rejected that idea, we still do have some necessities at Bay Beach Pavilion to make it warm in November. So um, we will need to rent that. We may not have to go out for bid for that, but I will, I will make sure that I have that answer for you at our next meeting. We do also have to, um, I, I, I see your hand, Chris. We do have to, we will get mentors from the Center for Tech and Civic Life. So they will actually help us to make sure that all of our plans. Okay. Go so, ahead, Chris. Well, I guess along those lines, doesn't the council um, have to accept this grant? Yes. So okay. I've already put in, I've already filled out the form the agenda for finance for Tuesday. Because I think the high speed tabulators are gone. Uh, and I'd really like to get on that to make sure because Kim and I are really worried. Yeah. 
about election day and the longer we keep waiting. So I need to know, I thought we had to wait for council to accept the money before we could spend it. And I, you kind of were cutting out when you talked about the house the tabulator. Mm -hmm. We don't, that's what we have to buy. We can't right. go out for bit. Okay. Right, I just, right. I it's a sole here. source. So just using that as an example of a sole source. We're not going out to bid to buy the tabulator. You have to buy that one only. Because it's so, certified. Right. Yeah, okay. Exactly. So, you know, yeah, I'm not, that's a question for the finance director. Um, so, Chris, maybe you can just ask that. I mean, I, we have to spend this money, I believe, by December 31st. So even if we have it ordered, now, granted, that's not me. <laughs> yeah. Why don't well, you and I have a, uh, an offline conversation with Diana just to make sure that we can at least put the order in? Um, well, that would be the electronic poll books, too, then. Because we that were told. Would be the electronic poll books, too. Which this grant includes. We're, we'll, we'll get there in a sec. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we won't get them because Until they're not November. available. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I know we put the electronic poll books just for everyone's um, edification. We put electronic poll books and the DS450 tabulated because these are good pieces of equipment for us to have for obviously for running a presidential election in a pandemic and then also for the future. Of course, lots of other places want these items and you know their availability is unclear. Would that be an accurate word, Chris? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so then number three, deploy additional staff and or technology improvements to expedite and improve the accuracy of absentee ballot processing. And so, Green Bay, this is really about a lot of staff that we need um, in order to make that happen. And then this is the curbside voting, which we already do. Um, and this is the expanding uh, early in person. And then this next one is uh, expanding voter and uh, community education. So for us, um, we definitely want, so we had talked about doing every door direct mail. Um, and then when I had spoken to, uh, we do have a mail piece going out, which we'll discuss in a little bit. Um, every door direct mail is probably not gonna be good for us in that way. So we do have a mail piece going out to every residential unit in the city of Green Bay um, about the upcoming August election. And uh, that total cost is uh, $11,000, $12,000. So, um, you know, but we need digital advertising. We need lots of different things. I'm not sure about radio and television, but uh, we definitely put it on there. Um, Geofencing, billboards, targeted mail, um, whatever we can do in order to essentially get people to vote. Um, we would like to also address not necessarily the ballots, because there's a complication with having ballots in different languages, right, Chris? Because the county has to print that. The county prints the ballots? Yes. And they only, yes. And they only print them in English, right? Right. Correct. Right. So, um, but we want to make sure that we can at least reach the households who may not be comfortable as in English as their second language and make sure they understand what's on the ballot, how to vote, that kind of thing. And that total for us is $215,000. Then scrolling down further. Oh, sorry, any questions thus far? Uh, down further. Um, so poll worker recruitment. Now this is where uh, we did, I used Chris's number of 380 for both elections. 
and paying them what we normally pay and then giving a 50% raise. So that's where we get, and then uh, I put some money in also for the training, our own training for a total of about $175,000. So we will be compensating poll workers a little bit more, 50% more. Oh my gosh, that's, that's very, <laughs> people know that they might be more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's still, that's still what, $221 or so, but still. I mean, listen, this is an important job, and people are really gracious, gracious and generous. Well, I was pleased when we worked the April election when I got my, whatever it was, statement from the bank. I did get more money, and I wasn't excited. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. As they left that night, the girls were, or the people that were working, Oh, we work so much over. Are we going to get paid more? Are we going to get paid more? I said, I don't have any authorization on that. I said, well, just, you know, I'm sure they did get paid more, but I hope they did. Right. I did get a little bit more. That was very nice. Yeah. So that's, you know, I thought it was important to do that. Um, and, you know, some other cities offered some other different kinds of pay, but um, essentially, well, you can read that for yourself. One quick question, and this might yep. be something the clerk can talk to you offline about, but um, under Madison's uh, portion, I think it was under this poll worker, they talk about an M MIT technology project um, that they use to just determine staffing levels. Is that something um, that we could utilize, or is that something you have to purchase ahead of time, like access to it? Or is that something we could look into? Well, I've I've had something, I believe, four years ago sent to me, and I don't know if it was MIT, but they did a um, they did something like this, and it didn't make sense at all, because number okay. one, especially now with COVID, they were saying, okay, have this many people here at this time, this many people here at this time, and I thought to myself. You know, and I looked at our numbers and I kind of talked to some poll workers about when they were busiest and it didn't match at all. Oh, okay. That's my opinion. You know, if you want to go that route, that that's fine. But um, you can't, you can't guess when people are going to come, right? I mean, how do you know? Yeah, I didn't, I don't know what this is. I just thought it was, when I was reading it earlier, I thought that was an interesting, you know, I, and right. whether or not we can utilize it. But if you've already looked at it and determined it's not useful for us, then. Well, let me just also say that the Center for Tech and Civic Life, I, like I said, they're going to assign us people who provide assistance and technical assistance. And if there's some toolkit out there that is very good, then I'm sure that we can use that um, to determine staffing needs. I would say, I don't know. Uh, I'd love to hear everybody else's opinion, but I think that if we know 380 is a really good number for us to run a presidential election, which is our highest turnout election by far, all of the elections we have, and if we know 380 is a really good number, we could take 250, but 380, then we need, I think we need to spend our efforts really getting to 380 because we never know, as Chris says, we never know who's going to show up at the polls. Now, you know, if in November we have we have 52,000 eligible, I'm sorry, 52,000 registered voters, and probably an additional 18,000 people who are not currently registered. So if we have 50,000 ballot absentee ballot requests, right? Turn up, then we know well, not a ton of people are going to show up to the polls, probably. Um, well, this or, was more time during what time? Oh, with times. Oh. And I that so people are sitting around it didn't make sense yeah yeah and also you know we're we're very we have a lot of shift work in our community mm -hmm. i'm not sure how much shift work madison has yeah but to to your point both of you to both of your points i think that the our technical advisors with the center for tech and civic life can give us some more um, information if there is something out there that would help us to determine 
when we need to have more poll workers than not, instead of having people sit around. So right, Celestine, okay. who are these people going to work? Who are these people going to work with you? Y you, me. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure that. Oh yeah, all them I'm folks. You know, we need kept in the loop. All hands on deck for this one. To be honest. Okay. okay. You know, but you're the clerk, so you're the leader. Can I make my cameo appearance here? Yes, yes, make your thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, you know, I just I want to go back to what you're talking about with the extra pay because you know, I want to recognize that Alder Weary had put in that communication for hazard pay and creating a policy. And I just want a minute here to talk with the committee and Alder Weary about that. Um, because I don't think it came to council yet. I mean, the, the refer to staff came refer to staff, but I don't think we necessarily need a, a policy to do this and I wonder how, what Alder Weary thinks about that and I can't see him because huh. I can't see him on this thing if he's even there I think oh he's yeah I'm here <laughs> there you are there you are now you talked so Alder Weary do you think that we should go in I mean should we still do that or should we just go with this and increase their salaries by 50 percent and and just just do that I think what, that's what fine. Think? I, I really only put that on there in case it was needed. You know, I was just trying yeah. to think of the what ifs. What if they're saying we can't do it unless we have a policy change? So I, I, I just covered both sides there. So at finance, which they may come back with something, um, just do you want? Which you want me to? Are you going to be there? You want me to receive invoice on file? Say the committees are may had an, has another plan now. I, I want well, to be ready for next week. I, I would have a question. Uh, what if this happens again next year? Are we just going to, you know, yeah, wing it again? What or? We, well, what if we don't have any, what if we don't have extra money? I mean, this, we're doing this because we got yeah. a whole bunch of extra money. That was, that was the reason. I mean, I just, hopefully, please try to come to finance if you can. Because <laughs> I, and it might not even be on the agenda, but I think it, it will be. It is on the agenda. It is, I figured, because it was on last time. And I I just want to, you know, first say thank you. You even came up with the idea of doing that. So I'm sure that had an impact on this grant writing. Um, and I think that's important. And I'm really glad that the grant had in there. So that's it. I'll now go back to my blanket and I'll just listen. Okay. Thanks, Alder. Um, okay, any other questions before we move on to the next item? Okay. So ensure safe and efficient election day administration. So for us, $426,000 for the electronic poll books and the high speed tabulator, the ballot, um, additional staff. Uh, we also, also wanted to make sure we had the proper PPE and the cough and sneeze guards as well as the disinfectant supplies. So um, hopefully we can obtain our high-speed tabulator. You know, I mean, if the electric, we'll have to see what we can get. But I figure, you know, as Chris has talked about this for a while, and if we could get the Center for Tech and Civic Life to support us to improve technology, then I think that is a win-win for everyone. And what about the electronic poll books? Did you, did Chris, did you say they're not available or they might become available? That's a question mark. A um, couple of meetings ago that the email from the WEC was put in the packet and um, they did the training and the signing up for that in 2019. We didn't have the money then. Um, and although I'd love to have them, I think using them in November would be a huge mistake. But I, I would love to get them. Mm -hmm. Love it. But if you watch some of the news on some of these other um, states, they did new equipment on um, big yeah. elections, and it was a disaster. Yeah. And I've talked to other clerks. There's glitches on these. Um, in February, they stalled on them. Mm -hmm. um, and 
that you still need to print the poll books. Mm -hmm. And another thing is that I'm not crazy about during a big election is some people refuse to sign the voting, the pad. And if they refuse to sign that, they don't vote. Mm -hmm. We don't want to turn people away. So I, you know, especially people that only vote every four years, I think that could be a deterrent. Um, you know, it's just like a credit card when you used to sign for the purchase. So people think that their signature is captured. And I'm, that's, that has come from other clerks in Brown County. And I think that if there is a, Susan, I think, or Chair Smith, I think if there is uh, another um, methodology out there, another piece of technology, hopefully the Center for Tech and Civic Life can give us that advice. Um, if the electronic poll books are not available, um, and I, I had heard the same thing, and Chris is very, very clear, the WEC was very clear, um, both that you need to have your poll workers practice with this. They need to be, the, the use of the technology needs to be inculcated before they basically, you know, they're basically, you need to do summer stock before you do Broadway. So Broadway is the presidential election. Um, and, uh, you know, if we can get them, great, but it's gonna be problematic as Chris says. So, you know, once again, we put it in there because we want this center to know that we would like to upgrade our technology and we think that the upgrade of the technology will help us to run a smoother election for 2020 and, and, and beyond. And so if there's some other methodologies as I said that they can come up with, then obviously we're open to listening. Great. Then, oh, we're almost at the end here. Oh, we're at the conclusion. <laughs> we are at the end. So um, that is pretty much a broad overview, I'm gonna stop share, um, of the grant that we wrote. Um, I do have, so next steps, let's talk about that. And then lots of, let's have some discussion, let's have some, um, let's have some questions. So next steps are, we need actually grant, grant agreement. So we're waiting for that grant agreement to come to us. Um, once we get that grant signed uh, by both parties, we will then, like I said, get our technical advisor. Uh, that is very common with grants. I have a grant, I have two grants, um, one to the Fund for Lake Michigan, which did not come with a technical advisor, but another one with the um, Great Lakes Champions, which did. So that's very common. Um, so once we get that, then our next step internally is to, like I said, take all of the pieces of what we said we were gonna do, what we wanted to do, and just lay them out for all of us for internally to understand, talk to our mentors, and get going. But, but. Yeah. Well, before anybody has, I don't know if we have any questions or anything, but congratulations. I mean, this is this obviously is a lot, a lot of work. So congratulations to you and to Clark Teske. Um, this is quite a bit of um, detail and work that went into this grant writing. So thank you very much for doing that. I know what happened there. That's not me, I hope. <laughs> Okay, hopefully that's not that aliens. Okay. <laughs> um, any questions about the grant and next next steps? Yes, Alderman Weary. Thank you. Um, yeah, well done. I don't know who had the most. You know, if, you know, Chris or Celestine or the mayor. You know, whoever was all involved. Uh, good job on that. That's uh, certainly a large sum of money. I mean, that's a lot uh, so well done on that um, do you anticipate when we sign the agreement that it's an acknowledgement that this is a one-time funding and we're not expect some of these things you know and impacts future budgets I mean we might well adopt some of them we might there's some things in here that normally we would not be able to do <laughs> a lot of these right correct that's an excellent question and you know I think that it, it clearly is one-time money 
um, especially when it comes to paying staff members, go to navigators and advertising. This is stuff that we would definitely not be doing with our own budget. So I don't, I do not anticipate that this obligates us in the future. We have one election in 2021. We, so the primary and the um, general for so we might have, we could have two. We could have two. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, but that's a really good question and I will make sure I, I get that answer. I don't think right. that it obligates us. In the I, I wouldn't think so, but yeah, if you could update us on that. Yep. Um, I sure can. And then, uh, let's see here. Uh, along with a lot of, I mean, it's, it's a good document, you know, encourage you to read it. I always have to print mine off like Celestine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, are we also, are there methods and measures in place to ensure that only legal residents are voting? So the photo ID, all of our state laws um, still apply, right? And you have to use photo ID. Um, that photo ID has to be issued by the government. You also have to have your, so if you have a passport, you have to prove your address. Oh my gosh, now I'm getting into uncharted territory. Oh, this off the top of my head. Go ahead, Kim. <laughs> Go ahead, Kim. When, when you register to vote, right on the application, it asks right out, are you a U.S. citizen? There's four different questions. And if they check the box, it's on them. So if they check it saying they're a U.S. citizen and it comes back that they are not, that's something that the state takes care of after the fact, more or less. Um, they get them. Okay. People... But that, we will, I, and I appreciate that. You're right. Um, I know when my daughter signed up, I was helping her because it did ask that. But when we do our outreach, we'll make it pretty clear. You know, we're only reaching out to legal residents, and if you're not, you know, maybe in the future so, you can. But you know, outreach is is an interesting animal, Alder, because you know what you want with outreach. And Allison, um, you may want to chime in here too. Is you want to cast your net broadly to say hey, there's this opportunity, it's called voting, and here's what you have to do in order to vote. And go drag your Aunt Sally, who hasn't voted since 1973, you know, come, come bring her to the polls. Um, so then once Aunt Sally, who hasn't voted since Nixon, comes to the polls and says, well, here's my driver's license, I'm a, I'm a resident of, I'm a, you know, U.S. citizen, or I'm a permanent resident. Um, no, sorry, I'm a U.S. citizen, and here's my license, here's all my documents, I want to register to vote. So the outreach we cast widely so we can get that information out there, right? But when it comes to actually signing up, you have to abide by everything. You must be a U.S. citizen, you have to have that ID in the state of Wisconsin. It's, very, it's actually, our laws are pretty strict. All right. Great, and I just wanted to comment on the, the, the equipment. You were talking about whether or not to wait for council. Technically, we should, but I don't know if anybody's on council is really going to say no. <laughs> so maybe you can kind of <laughs> order it, but <clears throat> not official. <clears throat> and I, I respond to Alder Weary. She's still listening. <laughs> yes, Clerk Teske? Um, that is, you know, one thing that, I guess I'm looking at with this grant is also getting some e equipment that we could never afford otherwise yeah. that will help us for many elections down the road. Yep. Um, I'm really, and I know I've said this before and I apologize, but Kim and I are so worried about election day with all these absentee ballots coming in um, and, you know, we don't want to get told, well, you know, yelled at, why don't you have the results in on election night? Because we have five machines. That's all we have for all of these. So um, that would be such a huge, huge help to us. So, yeah. you know, if, if it comes to council, please push it. <laughs> <laughs> It's all I don't I think want. you'll find. I, I don't know. think you'll find any resistance. <laughs> Could be okay. wrong. You yeah. heard it here first, 
right here. <laughs> right here. Um, Allison, did you want to offer any more comments about outreach? Oh, well, April? I could, I could, yeah, also, but I would want to, I did want to say you had asked us to index, and I, I assume you meant to sort of compare, and I don't, I think you actually did a really comprehensive job. I love okay. the idea of having the um, guides, I can't remember what they're called, in the particular communities to help people. So I don't think, I think we framed it a little differently. I don't think there's that much different. I think we had some items that were kind of about reproducing the, you know, civic excitement of voting that are maybe not in here, but I don't think there is appropriate for this grant. So um, I, I didn't necessarily see anything that was missing and the funding exists, unlike our plan, which was sort of, those would be nice. Um, H, I don't know if you saw, if you if there was anything that jumped out at you, but I was really, and again, congratulations, super exciting. Very thorough. I really enjoy it. I, I read it all and, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do to really get people to vote. Right. Awesome. So let me just also say what I, what I think at this point the role of this committee is in this grant. So we do have this ad hoc committee on elections and our just to help make the elections better for 2020. Um, and hopefully beyond, right? But our charge really is for the elections this year. And so, you know, what I anticipate us doing, we still have some work to do for November. Um, we still have work to do as far as recruiting poll workers. But when it comes to, you know, some of the details of the grant, um, the voter navigators, the, um, the um, oh, the actual like outreach events, um, that kind of thing, the advertising beyond what we've already put together, which was a very quick mail piece for August. So I see that this um, committee will have input and decision making over what some of that looks like. Obviously, it's got to be super quick. So I don't have a schedule yet. Um, I have to say, when I, you know, when we heard news of getting this grant, um, I told my husband, we had dinner with our sons and went to bed and I woke up at like four o'clock. I'm like, so I was like, oh my God, it's so exciting, right? I did my money dance and I woke up at four o'clock. Oh my God, that's a million dollars. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I think, like I said, I see the committee's role really being helping to make some of those decisions around as Allison's saying around outreach, about around advertising on events. Um, yeah. So I think it'll be great. A lot of work. Yes, quick, uh, Chris, quick testing. Are they, um, who is going to supply the, the legal um, part of it? You know, because Wisconsin law is different than other state laws. And so I just want to make sure that we're following, you know, me, Celestine, I'm just oh, such yes. a stickler when it comes to the law. Oh, yes. To make sure that, you know, we are doing what we're supposed to be doing. And I think that's a really good point. So that was something else that I had thought about. I'm like, well, gee, I really hope that we have whoever we get from the Center for Tech and Civic Life that we have somebody who knows Wisconsin's uh, voting elections law because every state is different. Yeah, Every state is different. Right. And, um, and I think, Susan, I mean, I think it's, I'm not overstating it by saying we actually have 50 voting schemes in the United States. I don't yep. know that any one state is like another. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. So given the fact that this is five, the biggest, the five biggest municipalities in Wisconsin, I'm thinking that I'm hoping that they give us someone who knows Wisconsin law. If not, there are the five of us and certainly our own, you between you and our city attorneys and we've got walk. Um, so, but I think we need to keep an eye on that. I'm, I don't know. I don't have an answer for you firmly right now, but I would that they're going to give us somebody who knows Wisconsin law. Okay. Like the back of their hand. I think this, this group, if I could, is from Chicago or Illinois, right? 
one yeah. big difference is uh, between Wisconsin and Illinois is we don't allow dead people to vote. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I'm joking. There's a lot of places that have that reputation. <laughs> I know. It's not just Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, I think that I, I'm confident that they're, because they have their reputation of Illinois here too. They can't give us advice that makes sense in Kansas. Right, absolutely. And also they have to, as Chris, <laughs> talking really in person absentee they have to be able to keep up with all the laws all the all the um uh court challenges that change what we do so that's breathtaking in and of itself so any other you know questions now i said this is just very introductory there's a lot more work coming down the road um any other questions that you may have about anything that you read in the grant Allison? Uh, yeah, Celestine, I know it's only been a month since you wrote the grant, but it feels like a long time and a lot has changed. I just wonder if there's anything in there that you, besides the equipment that we already talked about that may be difficult to get, that you feel like the context for it has changed since you wrote the grant. I'm just thinking, you know, are we thinking of the things in the grant as kind of a to-do list that you're going to prioritize or have other things changed? Um, sizably. I'm thinking in part about the drop boxes, early in person voting, those sort of things. So, you know, from that's a really good question. Um, the only, when I was going through this in my head and looking at the grant again, the one thing that I think that I was not sure about when we put it in there was that equipment, especially those electronic poll books. So, everything else I think is really up for us to plan for and essentially. Let's, we, I want to plan for it, and if we can't do it, then we can eliminate it. There is one idea that kind of came to us. I'm not sure if we can do it, so I won't say it you know, publicly, but I didn't put it in the grant. Um, but if we could do this one little idea, I think it would be kind of interesting. So um, I think there's room for us to change what we put in the grant a little bit. To what extent, I'm not sure. But I think everything else besides really, in my opinion, the electronic poll books, Everything in there is exactly what we want. And I think it hasn't changed since then. Because, you know, you're right. A month ago is like a year ago, especially in the middle of a pandemic. But, you know, I mean, the PPE, all that stuff, I think we're all pretty much on that same track. Got it. Terry? I have a question for Chris. Would more than one of those high-speed tabulators help your office out if you could get more than one? <laughs> Because if we can't get the electronic poll books, I think if two would be more helpful, that's where we should go. Because if come. your office runs more smoothly, so does the rest of us. <laughs> and we'll still operate with paper poll books. I know. Tim, Tim and I are just praying that we get one. Just want one. <laughs> we just, just want. <laughs> it, it does quite a few ballots an hour. So I think one would would work for us you know um and how then the electronic it, how big is me. it how is it the same size as a ds250 it's a whole different shape we're not getting the highest one the highest one was rented um for the recall for the presidential in 2016 that thing's huge oh. this is a smaller version i think mm -hmm. it said it ran about four thousand an hour wow. so i mean that would be just fantastic the electronic poll books I would love to get but prepare for it because what that will do is that will eliminate a lot of our work after the fact so during a presidential election we always have a ton of overtime because we only have 30 days to get the information in to the state um, and a lot of times we are just we are working so hard and it's just exhausting that would eliminate that. So I, I would like those down the road, if we could get those. And so then Chris, my next question for you on the electronic poll books. So those are more helpful to you than they are the poll workers or does that eliminate the need for two poll workers? To have um, the electronic? I have to check on the law um, because when I looked into it, I was told we would need 
two at the poll book table, at least one at registration, depending on how big the ward was, and then a spare. And they're a couple thousand apiece. So with 47 wards, I was like, oh, this is never gonna happen. They were gonna try and get the law changed where it could go down to one electronic poll book. And I don't know if that actually happened. I didn't keep track of that because we weren't getting them. But I know that we have to do, still print the poll books because if there's any glitch at all, we have to keep things moving. So that would help. I mean, poll workers have to look up the people on this little pad, then they turn it around and the people sign. I guess it's a lot, it, it reduces errors as far as poll workers go. Oh, but I mean, we have, we're pretty, you guys are pretty good. So I'm not sure it saves time on our end, really. It does, it does some things. I just don't like the glitches right now. I was hoping, you know, that they would be more improved by now. Okay. Um, Cause what happened is like ESNS, I think, or a company had them and then the deputy WEC decided to make their own, to do a cheaper version. So I just saw, you know, I think the, the dollar amount was in the packet, came to like a couple thousand dollars a piece. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, Chief of Staff Jeffries, when did you say the money had to be spent? Is it by the end of this year? Yes. This year, okay. I'm fairly certain at the end of this year. Mm -hmm. Well, and then I thought of more things to, to buy if that's the case, if we are doing, um, you know, the sites, the satellite sites. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. They have um, big cart cages that you can lock all the equipment in. Nice. Um, so I didn't know, depending on where we get, mm -hmm. we could lock it up. Then we don't have to worry about the room locked and who has a key for it. Mm -hmm. You know, they'd still have to bring the, the ballots back and everything. Um, but there's other things that, you know, we would need to make life easier because when the girls were over at transit, yes, that was a lot, a lot of hauling, a lot of schlepping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I put that on your list because I think it would make sense for us to make if we're you know going to do, and I think we are going to do um, other early in person sites. Then we want to make it easy for the staff members to be able to go and open up the election, the polling location, so people can come and vote. And the other thing is that that's going to be the norm. Then are we ordering more express votes? So yeah, because we have to have at least one express vote at each at at each of the other early in person sites, right? Correct, correct. And now this, but this fall is since we decided on the aug. Well, when are they doing these? Are they planning for November? For November. Okay. Yeah. So depending, then let's you know keep that in mind that if we don't have the um, regular amount of polling locations, then we would have some spares to use for November because I don't think, I don't know if we can order those either. Oh. I think those, those are really hard to get. So I don't know, I'd have to check on that, but at least we would be covered for November because okay. if we don't use all 31 places, we have a couple to spare. Okay. All right, well, just, Keep that on your list, Chris, if you would. Because that 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 seems like yeah, something we probably want to do sooner rather than later. Oh and computers and right. printers. Right. All of that. And right. then whether, you know, because transit was so nice because the computers were right there. They were set up. They were ready to go each time. Now they're going to have to hook them up every time because they're going to put them away locked up. So right. there's a lot of that that we're going to have to, um, for safety reasons. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And then can I just ask one other thing? When you said there there could be drive through voting, you're not talking election day, right? Yeah, no, I so basically I, I put drive through voting because like I said, this committee had actually said no to drive through voting. And um, I think for some good considerations, but I because the question was asked in the grant about yep. drive through, not curbside, I just okay, so how much would it cost if we had drive through? Right. Put that in there. So I just just want to clarify that yeah. we couldn't do it on election day unless we did it for every single polling location. Right. I could see doing it for early in person. Mm -hmm. So I just, which, just throwing it out there. Yeah, in October, you know, that's that. I think that might have been some challenges. You know, we could we could get lucky, but we just don't know. I mean, this is right. the, this is why, really and truly, we want to encourage people to vote absentee by mail. Right. That is the way for. Oh, go ahead, Kim. Sorry. Oh, no, I just want to make a point though. So we're July twenty first. We're only going to be allowed to have early in person voting two weeks prior to the election date. Right. Though. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because for sure, you know, for November, so that puts us back to for the, that two weeks for the November election puts us back to October 20th. Yeah. So, so then is some of that grant money going to pay for people that are going to staff that? That's my plan. And are they going to be city employees? Um, they could be. I mean, obviously, they have to be trained. I know that the training part is an issue. Um, well, they, they have to be. They, they have to be certified. Certified. Sorry, certified. Mm -hmm. And the issue, and so I don't know if this should be, you know, offline that we're talking about it or not. But we can't just throw new people out there to do this. Yeah. So I, I just. So let, let's let's maybe we should because then it is a question of who does what when, right? Right. Yeah. I get that. Let's talk about that when we have a bigger internal meeting about what we're going to do. Okay. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, going back to the drive-through voting, that was one of the concerns that the committee had is sort of this new system, trying to do that along, you know, during this time period and have, it's obviously a big election. So I can see that that would have, there are some logistical questions that have to be worked through. But the big, the big thing on that is Terry was gonna quit and Terry can't quit. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was only if she was required to do it, right? So if it's early in person. Then it would be okay. Then it might not. <laughs> I don't know. I won't speak for you. Yeah, that's... I, I understand that. I, thought so. I, I actually am totally opposed to it for any of the poll workers. 100%. I, I, would, yeah. not be, I would not vote for it in any way. I, you know, I think it was... I think Racine did it. Um, I don't know. You know, when you look at the grant, you see, I think, the flavor of each one of the communities that submitted. And we're all really different. So I think that we have to I think we have to be true to who we are a little bit, you know. I guess one other focus I think I would like to see us do in the future is we can't have an, an election if we don't. I guess we need to I think we need to cater to our polling locations more. You know, whatever stipend is being offered to them, I, I think it needs to be bigger. And, you know, the stipend to the, the poll workers, because without both of those, you can't, you don't get polling locations, which means there's nowhere for the voters to go. So I think we really need to focus on, on that a little bit to maybe get more locations interested in being a location. Yeah, and actually the city of Milwaukee, they, I think it was Milwaukee, had included more money so more money for cleaning and more money for rent renting. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So, you know, we kind of went with the people aspect as opposed to place aspect, but 
Well, we do have a million. Couldn't we just buy four buildings in the four, <laughs> please? <laughs> then we don't have to ever have to worry again. That would be kind of cool. Wouldn't it? Uh, okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Well, a couple buildings for sale that would actually fit in, but yeah, no. I tried. I know. <laughs> Office Max at East Town Mall. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Is that closed? Yeah, uh, will be soon, I think. Closing. Yeah. I do not get out much these days. <laughs> um, okay. Any other questions on the, um, the Wisconsin Safe Voting Plan? And again, big congratulations. I'm glad you did a happy dance when you heard about it. It's That was quite quite a coup, so very nice. Any other questions or comments? I think this one is a regular business, so we need a motion. Okay. Anyone? What are we looking for a motion on? <laughs> so it's regular business. You can, you know, you can accept it. You can say. Um, that we, you know, accept it and then the committee will, whatever you decide would be, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Should, should we maybe recommend that the city council, whatever it is they have to do, agree to it, accept the funding? I mean, I think Alderman Wary is right that they probably will, but should yes. we make that recommendation as a committee? Um, we don't have to do that because finance is going to do that. Okay. That would be that would be good if they weren't going to do that, but it needs to go to finance. So the that that part of it would be covered. But they're just accepting the funds, they're accepting the grant. Maybe this committee wants to accept, you know, the ideas behind the grant or just some thoughts. Crickets. <laughs> I'm not sure as chair I could make a motion. Can I? Do you know, Chief? Yeah. Maybe. Sometimes I have, but. <laughs> um, yeah. Looks like H is about to talk. I see it. <laughs> okay, H, go for it. Um, I say that uh, I make a motion that we accept uh, the proposal or the. I'm trying to think of the wording here. This is the part that I'm confused on. How do you think voting that? plan. Yes, uh, the plan. Um, what are the, what are some other things that I should say? Come on, help me. <laughs> uh, now you can help, Susan. Now, now um, you can help. There we go. <laughs> accept the Wisconsin Safe Voting Plan and approve the recommendations uh, held within. Is that mm -hmm. okay? There we go. <laughs> accept the Safe Voting Plan and approve the recommendations. Um, held within. And, and, and now we that, need a second. We need a second. I'll second. Awesome. Thank you, Terry. Terry Racine, second. Okay. So the motion made by H. Smet, seconded by Terry Racine, to accept the Wisconsin Safe Voting Plan and approve the recommendations held within or mm -hmm. within the group. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? No Who doesn't one doesn't want a million dollars. Yes. <laughs> I know where you live. <laughs> awesome. Approved unanimously. Great. Thank you. Thanks again to you guys for doing that. Um, last thing on the agenda is adjournment. Do we have a motion? I make adjourn. a motion to adjourn. Oh, I'm <laughs> wary. Second by Chief of Staff Jeffries to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Great. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.